Next problem in the fillet welder connection. Let me read the problem first. A tie member consisting of two angle sections of size ISA 100 by 75 by 8 mm is welded back to back, back to back of 10 mm thick gusset plate. So, the size of the angle is 100 by 75 by 8 mm which is connected to back to back of the gusset of 10 mm thickness. Design the weld to transmit a working pull of 300 kilo Newton. So, the working load is given as 300 kilo Newton. We can make that as a factor load by multiplying the load factor 1.5. Assume that longer leg is connected to the gusset. So, they clearly mentioned that longer leg only has to connect with the gusset. So, shorter leg will be the outstanding one and the welding is done at shop. So, based on the given data, first we will draw the diagram. This type of double sections or built up sections are mainly used as top cord and bottom cords of the trusses. Here they ask to use two ISA 100 by 75 by 10 mm. So, I placed that as back to back on either side of the gusset plate. Gusset plate thickness is marked as 10 mm. The connected leg is marked as 100 mm. Outstanding leg is marked as 75 mm. The thickness is marked as 8 mm. So, first I have to find out the CG of these sections. For that you have to refer the steel table, then find out the CG of the, the section. Single section will be applicable to the double section also. So, the CG is I have uh, taken from the steel table as 31 mm from the top edge. This will be the side view of this that figure. The, uh, the applied pull is acting through the CG of the section, it is acting at a distance of 31 mm from the top. The connected leg size is marked as 100 mm. Okay. Uh, first, uh, uh, let me assume that P1 is the force resisted by the weld at the top, P2 is the force resisted by the weld at the bottom, L1 is the length of the weld required to resist the pull P1, no sorry, force P1. L2 is the length of the weld required to resist the force P2. Uh, this P1 and P2 will act opposite to the applied force T. Okay. First, I will convert the working load into factor load. Therefore, factor load is equal to 1.5 times 300 that is given working pull 450 kilo -newton. This 450 kilo -newton is applied to two angles. So, for one angle I have to divide that value by 2. So, load on one angle section is 450 by 2 that is equal to 225 kilo Newton. So, for each angles I have to provide weld at the top as well as at the bottom. See the cross section top as well as at the bottom. The total force resisted for one angle section is 225 kilo Newton. So, this procedure is the, the next uh, rest of the procedure is similar to the uh, previous problem. Okay. So, first I will assume that let assume that P1 equal to force resisted by weld at top side, weld at top side. Then let P2 equal to force resisted by weld at bottom side. Okay. If we consider here. So, the total tensile force acting on this is 225 kilo Newton for one angle. We consider the horizontal equilibrium, horizontal equilibrium. T is acting from left to right, P1 and P2 is acting in the opposite direction. Therefore, P1 plus P2 is equal to T, okay, fine. Next, I will take a moment about the bottom side sum of the moment at bottom is equal to 0 and considering clockwise positive. Let me go to the problem figure. See, I am taking moment about the bottom line. So, the force P1 into the perpendicular distance is connected leg size is 100. So, P1 into 100 that is making an uh, which uh, anti clockwise moment that is why I put minus sign minus P1 into 100. P2 is acting at the same point itself, the distance perpendicular distance is 0, therefore the P2 term will not come. Okay. 
so see the minus p1 into 100 minus p2 into 0 the whole term will be 0 there is no perpendicular distance then plus moment due to that force t t into perpendicular distance perpendicular distance is up to the base is 100 minus 31 see the figure t into t is acting at 31 mm from the top so i need the distance from the bottom to that uh, force t so 100 minus 31 give the perpendicular distance from the bottom so i am putting t into 100 minus 31 equal to 0 okay then if you simplify this equation by substituting the value of t as for one angle section as 225 the other unknown is p1 you can get the p1 value as 155.25 kilo newton once you know the value of p1 you can substitute that value in this equation number 1 here p1 plus p2 is equal to t substitute the value of t as 225 p1 as 155.25 you can get the value of other unknown p2 is 69.75 kilo newton so now we have calculated the force resisted by the weld at top and bottom then we have to find out the corresponding length of the weld L1 and L2 for that we know the formula to calculate the design strength of the weld FWD equal to FU by root 3 1 by gamma MW into AW area of the weld this formula is obtained from the steel table from the class 10.5.7.1.1 here FWD equal to I am combining this value writing in a single equation F u by root 3 into 1 by gamma MW into to get the strength I have to multiply stress with the area here we have to, I have to use area of the weld area of the weld is nothing but the length into throat thickness ok so to get the throat thickness value first I will assume the size of the weld ok for length of the weld first I will calculate the strength of the weld for 1 mm length in that case length will be equal to 1 mm ok then I know the angle section thickness is 8 mm gusset plate thickness is 10 mm okay. first I will uh, work out the value for minimum size of the weld that will be governed by the maximum size of the plate which, which are all connected the angle size is 8 mm plate size is 10 mm mostly the maximum size of the plate will govern the minimum size of the weld okay. for that we have to refer that table 21 in page number 78 table 21 page number 78 here I have to page number 78 table 21 ok here minimum size of the first run or of a single run fillet weld that is for thickness of thicker part so this will be very important thickness of the thicker part which I have to consider 8 mm is there for angle section 10 mm for gusset plate here the thickness I have to consider the highest one highest one is 10 mm okay. up to and including uh, 10 mm the minimum size of the weld is 3 mm okay. so let me assume that minimum size as a 3 mm Oh, sorry, I have wrongly marked here as a 5 mm. It is 3 mm. It is 3 mm only. So you need to uh, you can convert that as a 3 mm. So the limit as 3 mm. Then coming to the maximum size of the weld. Maximum size of the weld is governed by the minimum thickness of the plate. Here the minimum thickness of the two connected plate is 8 mm. Here for that you have to refer uh, the figure 17A and figure 17B. Figure 17A as well as figure 17b let me uh, see the figure 17a and 17b 17a 17a will give the maximum size of the weld 
here the angle if the angle is having square edges means i have to use the figure 17a if it is having curved edges means i have to use the figure 17b so let me see the figure which one will come to our case let me see the cross section figure see in this figure it is very clear that at the top we have a square edge at the bottom we have curved edge which formula has to be used we have to use both the formulas to find the maximum size of the weld the least among the two has to be considered for the maximum size of the weld at the top we have a square edge at the bottom we have a curved edge let me back to this so that's why i put the minimum of according to figure 17a 8 minus 1.5 will be the maximum size of that is 6.5 according to the figure 17b 1/4 has to be lived the maximum size will be 3/4 of the thickness here thickness minus 1.5 that's why 8 minus 1.5 6.5 mm then 3/4 of the thickness 8 mm 3/4 of 8 is 6 mm among these two least will be 6 mm therefore the maximum size of the weld is 6 mm so now i have to assume the value in between the minimum and the maximum size i already told that minimum size of the weld is wrongly mentioned here actually that value is 3 mm so in between 3 to 6 mm i have to assume any suitable value so let me assume that maximum size that nothing wrong in the wrong is there if you assume the high, higher size the length of the weld required will be lesser if you use smaller size accordingly length of the weld will be uh, uh, more use size of the weld as 6 mm use size of the weld as 6 mm i am not exceeding the maximum value i am using maximum value itself there is nothing wrong in that so then effective throat thickness is equal to constant k into size of the weld constant k is 0.7 Okay, this was obtained from the table number 22 that depends upon the angle between the fusion faces for fillet weld we are having always are having an angle of 90 degree therefore it is 0.7 into 6 that will give the 4.2 mm okay this is available in table 22 page 78 next i will calculate the design strength of the weld for 1 mm length Okay, a few by root three. Here, the ultimate tensile strength of the angle section is 410 root three into one by gamma m w. Gamma m w is a partial safety factor for the weld. Here, they have mentioned as a soft welding is done for soft welding. It is 1.25. This value can be obtained from table five, page number 30. Then, length length of I am assuming for one mm length. Throat thickness is 4.2 by multiplying all this. I got the strength of the weld for one mm as 795.36 newton per mm this is the strength of the weld if we provided 6 mm per 1 mm length okay next i will calculate the effective length of the weld required to resist the effective length of the weld required to resist the force p1 equal to that force p1 is 155.25 kN i am converting that into newton by multiplying 10 power 3 divided by uh, strength of the weld for 1 mm is 795.36 give the effective length of the weld required as 195.19 mm okay at the top if we provide a weld at the top how many discontinuous edges are there let me show in the figure the cross section view so see the figure at the top at left as well as at right it is discontinuous so we have to provide end written at both the sides end written is two times size of the weld for one side we got to provide for two sides that's why i put plus 2 into two times size of the weld here the size of the weld i have assumed as 6 mm so 
Next, I am calculating the actual length required equal to effective length 195.19 plus 2 times because I am providing for both the ends. Then 2 times size of the weld. Size of the weld is 6 mm. So, by uh, substituting value of SS 6 mm, I got the value of 219.194 mm is required. I have to provide little higher than this or other same value. So, I am round off this value to the nearest number. So, I will provide a 6 mm weld for a length of 220 mm at the top. Let me say that length as L1. L1 is marked with the figure. Okay. Similarly, I have to calculate the effective length of the weld required at the bottom to resist the force P2. The P2 force is already calculated as 69.75. I am converting that into a Newton by multiplying with the 10 power 3 divided by the force 795.36 Newton per mm. This is strength of the weld for 1 mm length. It will give the length of the weld as 87.7 mm. It is a effective length. Again, at the bottom also, both the ends are discontinuous. I have to provide the end returns. For each side, I have to provide end return of 2 times size of the weld. I am having the two edges are discontinuous. So, actual length required is equal to 87.7 plus end return. 2 times size of the weld for again for both, both the ends 2. It is arrived as 111.7 mm. Let me round off to the nearest number 112 mm. So, provide 6 mm weld for a length that is L2 equal to 112 mm at bottom that both the length of the weld, weld has to be marked in the figure to complete the problem.